Hello, everybody, and welcome to Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network every Thursday. Uh, you can find me also on the Seeds of Liberty podcast and theconsciousresistance.com. That's theseedsofliberty.com. And uh, amazingly enough, I have now finally gotten Dave Painter, who is my other co-host. I, re- I interviewed Jer- Jeremy Hangeller last year in September and uh, Dave has been jealous and envious ever since. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to get Dave on naturally. Dave is an al- abolitionist um, and, and volunteerist, among other things. He's a uh, he's Seas Liberty co-host and co-founder, uh, along with uh, Jeremy and myself. So you can find his work at theseasofliberty.com. And he's also um, the admin of uh, Spot the Status. So give him a like over there if you <laughs> haven't already. So uh, today we're just going to... Talk about random various things. Uh, perhaps uh, start <coughs> off with uh, why what we have today cannot be considered capitalism in any sense, uh, but but rather corporate fascism or protectionism. And and I like uh, I like the way um, um, Daniel Rothschild put it, where he said uh, crony capitalism. Saying you know calling what we have today crony capitalism is like calling rape crony lovemaking. And uh, that's one of the ways I, uh, <laughs> that's one of the reasons I stopped saying crony capitalism. <laughs> so yeah, so Dave, yeah. Dave, thanks a lot for coming on. Hey man, I, I really appreciate you having me on. I, I've been a fan of your show. That's one of the main reasons I got you to come on to <laughs> our show. I don't want to say it's my show. That's never been my intentions ever with the Seeds of Liberty. Uh, if someone better or more w- well-spoken comes along that can replace me, I'm going to replace myself. So <laughs> yeah. I, that uh, it's it's whatever um but uh yeah you know it, it always drives me nuts when you hear communists or, or statists say uh you know look, look at like nestle you know they, they they drink a whole lake dry with their water bottles uh with their bottling of water and and that's just capitalism being rearing its ugly face and uh, our head and i'm just like that's what you described as nothing like capitalism, because what from the premise of what you just said, Nabisco, you just said Nabisco. It, Nabisco is a trademarked and it is a copyright uh, protected business that is using the tragedy of the commons on these lakes to suck them dry. Uh, and they're all using that, uh, all using government force for all that. So that's not capitalism. That is cronyism. That's fascism there's really not other another way to describe it it's a light form of fascism i mean there's not jack boots going around saying that you must buy from nabisco or nestle or whoever but they are protected by the government as a corporation because these corporations make money for the government through taxes yeah you're right i mean it's not outright um you know um fascism i guess they, they, they you know not complete government control but they are using the the power you know the, the power of the state to protect their industry to erect barriers to entry for other other businesses and and you're right you know just the fact of them using you know a, a ca- copyrighted name <laughs> you know talking about pro- uh, intellectual property is completely statist there's nothing free market about it right you exactly know? yeah yeah you're you're you've lost your argument that Nabisco or Nestle or whoever we're talking about is capitalist. The minute you mention a corporation's name, that's what that's what a communist doesn't understand. And I think that's where a lot of conflict comes between communists and anarchists, or, or, or capitalist and and economic totalitarians is is they don't understand half of the time what they're saying. And so you always have to push people down into please define things. And when you get someone to actually define capitalism the correct way, uh, or not really the correct way because you know definitions have different meanings across the world, but in the sense that uh, voluntarists or, or, or ANCAPs use it, uh, there's you can't call something capitalist that it has any government force in it in the equation at all. So, like uh, if I sold you a piece of bread, you gave me money and got and and I got money and walked away. That was a capitalist transaction. If I sold you a piece of bread and the government has to tax that transaction, that's fascist. If I'm forced to buy bread from you, that's government force. If uh, if you've regulated every one of your competitors out of the business by lobbying government, that's not capitalism. That's all fascism. Consolidation and state power are, are, are kind of the crux of, of this whole situation. You, you see... 
you know, never in a million years should a, a corporation like Walmart exist. <laughs> like, it's so big. It's, it makes so much money. And <clears throat> they go into a town and they shut down everything when they go to a town because the city will give that Walmart ca- tax breaks and tax incentives and, you know, no property tax, all kinds of incentives for them to come. But they'll, when they do that, everyone, no one else can compete with Walmart's prices because of the lobbying. So when someone goes, oh, look at, you know, what do you want, Walmart to rule the world? It's like, no, because if Walmart couldn't force you to buy their products, then you're done. But when they go into a town and everyone else has to shut down and they're the only place to go to, what's the difference? Yeah, you know, a lot of people um, come from the, uh, you know, the Occupy, you know, the Occupy Wall Street people or, um, yeah, I guess people just generally um, against corporations in general. And uh, and they tend to associate uh, people who who criticize the state with those who criticize corporations. And for me, you know, I, I have to, you know, or, or business in general, because you know, we have to make the delineation that that you know, I'm not I'm not against businesses, right? Because like you just said, businesses cannot force you to buy their product, right? And you know, selling, you know, growing your business, you know, to whatever proportion you can do is not necessarily a wicked thing, right? But but you know, once you use uh, protectionism and favoritism from uh, you know specialized uh, um, you know laws and and regulations to uh, you know to control your competitors, you know, then you're uh, <laughs> fendering different territory. And and so you know I have to make you have to make the distinction that these things like you said you know I'm not necessarily against Walmart I'm not necessarily against McDonald's or or any of these big corporations but um, just allow them to compete right on the on the open market without any favoritism from politicians and we'll see who rises to the top right because in the in the open market it's the consumer that determines who becomes wealthy and who goes bankrupt. <laughs> Right. Well, of course, it's uh, it's to me, it's the only real democracy. Uh, it, you know, pe- people all often equate like um, they often equate freedom in two different ways. Uh, as ANCAPs and voluntarists, we tend to lean towards economic freedom being tantamount to personal freedom. And some people don't look at it like that. They see the other they, they they're on the other side of the coin where freedom of risk, free freedom of any kind of uh, you, uh, you know uh, accident that could happen in their life that could derail their plans. You know, so when you hear people go, "Oh, the government's going to give me free health care. The government's going to give me this, this, and that." I'm more free than if I wouldn't have had all those things. That's that's the general consensus from these people, and and they don't realize that that's enslavement. That if 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 an entity can control you that much, then they can send you off to to fight in their war. They can conscript you to work in the factories for you know an effort. Uh, they they can do everything they want to you if if they control your economic freedom, mm-hmm. and. And I think a lot of people don't realize that. It's like, well, I, I may I may be broke as a joke, but I still live like a freaking king. I mean, there's welfare recipients in the United States that live better than any king has ever lived. Mm-hmm. In, in the classical sense of a king sitting on a throne, of, of, you know, as the head of the nation. Not like, uh, you know, Obama or, or, or Bush or somebody. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. And, and, uh, and a lot of people tend to attribute that wealth... Um or that rise of standard of living with government, right? As if uh, it's a great non sequitur that, you know, without government, we would be back in cavemen times <laughs> with clubs and, and uh, you know, be uh, people dying of, uh, you know, uh, it, treatable it, diseases all over the place. <laughs> <clears throat> well, yeah, you have this pragmatic look. Uh, you have this pragmatic look upon society, I, I believe, by a lot of people. They go, you know, technology is phasing jobs out. Uh, you have all these people are unworked. We should be spreading the wealth around these, you know, like Ford, you know, when they have, you know, 50 years ago, Ford would have to have 200,000 people working in their plants. And now they have, you know, like 10,000 because everything's been mm-hmm. roboticized or whatever you want to say. Mm-hmm. And, and you're going to say, well, this isn't fair that, you know, this corporation has all this power, all this money and the top guys are getting rich, but no one else is getting rich. And, you know. People have this weird thing where they think their labor means anything. 
And I, that's a, a big thing that I, I tell people from time to time is your labor means shit. It means nothing. The labor theory of value is a lie. Uh, if it was true, then we would be building skyscrapers with uh, – we'd be building skyscrapers not with cranes but with individual people loading stuff up and carrying it up to the top and as slow as possible. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's just a lie. You know, The only thing that gives any a human value is their intellect and, and that's it. And, and a lot of people don't realize that. And you can call me an economic Darwinist or whatever you want to call me, but that's fact and it can't be avoided. And anytime someone uses government force to try to avoid that fact is, is when bad things happen, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. I used to, uh, I used to be one of those people that, uh, thought that the, you know, the ultimate problem that, uh, you know, is, you know, the, the problem that is the foundation of the world's, uh, suffering is, uh, technology. <laughs> <laughs> and we just get rid of technology, get rid of the factories, <laughs> things will be much better, right? I mean, yeah, it, it's scary to ponder right now because we're on the precipice of it, you know? Like, the, the internet's taken us down this road, and I'm talking about humanity as a, as a, uh, as a species, is taking us down this road that is very scary. Also very, it's not, it's not so much... Uh, frightening or, 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 or something that you should go into with apprehension, but it's, it's just very unnerving to say the least. You know, what will happen when there's no jobs because everything's done with robots, you know, what's going to happen, you know, like that. And, and I, I truly think that that's where society will end up. Uh, I think, uh, I think robots are, you know, I mean, look at the difference between 2001 and 2010. Mm -hmm. You know, just or, or 11, if you want to go 10 years, just look at the difference between 2010 or 2001 and 2011 in America. I mean, 2001, not everybody was walking around with a computer in their pocket that could call a friend in China and talk to them. You know, so that's like the species hasn't caught up to the technology. And when it does, you know, the Luddite scare is always there and it does have some good points. But I think. Supply and demand always is 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 the key here, and as long as there's always a demand for human labor or human intelligence, uh, there'll always be a supply of it, um, so to say. So, I, if everything gets roboticized, who's going to fix the, who's going to get the thing that makes all that run? You know, like it's it's always going to be uh, human intelligence at work there until AI happens, I guess, and then. Then I, I really don't want to ponder what's going to happen after AI. I, I don't know if humans are going to go the way of the dodo or, hmm. or what. I, I really don't know. It's 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 scary to think. Uh, but uh, I, you know, it, technology isn't something to be scared of. It should be something that you should be using your brain to jump in front of and 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 grab upon it like a like a runaway train and just enjoy the ride. In my opinion. Yeah, the way I look at uh, at that is, um, it's like before automobiles, um, you know, we had horse horses, right, horse and buggy, and uh, and the one fear was they were extrapolating, like, okay, so if we have, you know, the population increases this much, and horses already produce this amount of excrement, how much ex excrement before <laughs> the entire United States is going to be is going to be full of excrement, right? And of course, the, the automobile gets created, and you know, many, many more people start using that, and less people. And so, to me, that just signifies, um, you know, our lack of creativity. To it's, it's that um, that Hayek quote where um, I think it's economics um, illustrates to men how little they know they can design, right? So we don't know the future. We don't know what innovations people will come up with. You know, all we see is like, okay, we're on oil right now. We're on oil and fossil fuel. Uh, you know, much of our, uh, of our economy is run by that. And that's not renewable, right? That's finite. So if, we, if that finishes, then we're all dead. <laughs> and that's where, that's where people's brains just shut down. But no, it never happens like that, right? There's always, you know, once, once a, a resource gets scarce enough, and it gets expensive enough, and uh, and it and it doesn't it doesn't um, it's not you know rational to continue using it. Then people will be um, incentivized to 
to create other forms of, you know, substitutions, right? Ways to get around it. And that's how we've been doing constantly, right? Um, you know, the, the, the amount of people that are fed today, if we didn't invent you know the um uh you know the 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 huge industrial machines to 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 till the soil and and pick the weed and things like that i don't think we could have fed um seven billion people right i think that's only as a result a direct result of that of that innovation no yeah right? especially you, know? you, you look at a, a country like india where you know 90 plus percent of the people are vegetarian so no one's eating meat over there really right. mm -hmm. uh, to to a large i mean it's probably the population of California, <laughs> but <laughs> mm. but uh, for the large majority, uh, people are veg vegetarians over there. I mean, that's a lot of vegetarian. That's a lot of vegetables to grow. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot of nuts and berries and all. All uh, so, yeah, I, I, the, the market has a demand for food. It's going to happen. I mean, when when the rubber meets the road, survival is the game in human technology. It's all almost all of our technology is either increase to living standard or, or a increase to survival rates. And a lot of people don't really, I think there's two type of people in this world. And I, and I, I'm, I'm guess I'm forcing a paradigm here, but bar with me for a second. I think there's two types of people. I think there's two, there's a person, there's the type of people that think inside the box on everything. Everything's, we have this system in place. How can we make it better? And then there's people that think completely outside of the box and say, maybe this system is completely wrong and we should move past it. And I think that everything has been changed by those out of the box thinkers. You know, you know, the, it's the nerds in society. It's the people that are the lazy people that don't want to do anything. Those are the people that create things. You know, <laughs> the TV remote wasn't created because somebody was getting. Uh, was hey let's make this cool thing no it was i'm tired of getting up and changing the channel <laughs> well, let's create a, a remote and figure this shit out so i don't have to get off the couch so it's always a quality of life situation with with, with human demand on market changes in my opinion mm -hmm. and, and, and you have this crony capitalism to get back to our original point you have this crony this cronyism this this uh oligarchy or, or whatever you want to or autocrat autocracy or whatever uh it's it's basically just government power in, injected into the marketplace however you want to define that you get subversion of market demand when you do that you get artificial demands you get all kind like just think about this okay you have all these people yelling about police needing body uh needing body cameras that's an artificial demand <laughs> like Cops shouldn't be there in the first place. Mm -hmm. So if they're not there, then the body cameras have no necessity. So that's an government's creating an artificial demand. So some some rich motherfucking corporate guy is going to get hooked up with a cool contract with with the state or the, the the sheriff department or whatever to sell them and be their only contractor for those those body cam reports. And everyone else is going to be shit out of luck mm -hmm. on that market. And that and then you get back to this the first order. The market for that shouldn't even exist. So, so it's 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 like uh, it's like uh, making a tank shells or something. You know, the, the 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 company that gets rich making ammunition for tanks. Like the tank shouldn't even exist. Mm -hmm. So everyone wants to go say, "Oh, this is capitalism." You know, no, it's it's entrepreneurs working within a system, whether it be evil or not, and they're they're trying to survive. They're trying to gain as much as they can and. And lose as little as possible. So every individual is always uh, self-interested in, in all their actions. Uh, and it's not greed. It's just how humans are. We're naturally defensive and naturally want to conquer our environment. Yeah, yeah. This uh, you, you, you raised two interesting uh, ideas. One is, um, you know, when you said body cameras, it's like, it's like um, you know, we have carjackers, right? And we can't just get rid of the carjackers. Let's just make them more efficient. Let's put body cameras on the carjack. <laughs> that's something that Larkin Rose. That'll Larkin, fix that's it. That's something that Larkin Rose is there, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's uh, <laughs> he. He always goes back to the carjacker because right. I think that's a universally uh, universally hated person as a carjacker. Yeah. 
I don't even think any carjackers even like themselves. <laughs> right, right, right. They hate themselves. Yeah, and, and the other thing you brought up was interesting was um, you know about about self interest, right? And uh, you know, in, in our in our society, most people tend to think that greed is evil, right? Or you know, you can't be in you can't be selfish, right? You got to learn to give back and and uh, greed you know. is a socialist term. It's a collectivist term, right? Because that doesn't in, that doesn't exist in a world of individuals where everyone realizes they're an individual that only exists in a collectivist racist you know status paradigm is is greed a thing because you know you look at you know like um bill gates or, or somebody who's richer than anybody on earth you know whatever or the rothschilds or what whatnot you look at those and people are they have a they have a right to be greedy towards those people those people didn't rightfully acquire those that 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 property. So you have this thing where people they're they're all mad at the wrong things. And they don't realize that government force is is can be the it is the most common denominator in every societal ill. You have the drug war. Oh, the cops are racist, okay? Get rid of the cops. <laughs> they only exist because of government force. Then there's no cops to be racist. All right? Then, if you want protection, you can go to the all-black protection company or the all-white protection company or whoever the hell you want to that offers you the best service. But no, you have to deal with the cops. So we need to fix why the cops are racist instead of the, the root cause of the problem, which is government force. The same way with most people hating capitalism. Once forces entered into capitalism, that's called fascism. They hate fascism, and the only way they think they can fix it is with government force. And so I ask these these people that are anti-capitalist, who has more sway with the government? You or Bill Gates? Honestly, who? Mm-hmm. Even if there's a thousand of you, who? <laughs> you know, it, it it doesn't matter to these people. Money's the only that money is their god, and that's all they bow to. And values, traditions, all this other crap, they go out the window for these people. You know, everybody's, uh, Obama's a Muslim, Obama's a a Christian, Obama's an atheist. That motherfucker has one God, and that God is the greenback Federal Reserve note. That is it. That is all he (laughs) desires in life. The man was worth $10 million before he became president. He's worth $330 million now. That was last year. Really? I don't know what it right. is now. No, so, shoot. <laughs> so he got into pres- he got in- he got into politics for purely altruistic reasons. No, he's a fucking <laughs> parasite like all of them. So you sit here. What's the common denominator here? Government force. Okay, so if you can tell me we can have communism without government force, I would love a detailed explanation of that. But that's I I still don't think it could happen. Not not saying I'm not open to the idea, but if you if you can show me capitalism, true capitalism, I, I, I guarantee you, you would see humanity greatly rise past where we're at now. I mean, think about think just think about the school systems right now and where they would be if it was all left up to the free market and charity. It would be we'd be pumping out the smartest people on the planet, but no, the government control freaks want to control the minds of all their little slaves and they want to force people into into this, you're going to be this kind of citizen. You're going to be this kind of citizen, and instead of being, you're going to be an individual. That's what the that's what every school should teach you: be an individual. Fuck the collective. Be an individual. And they don't do that because government and force is involved. You should respect the state. You should respect the collective because you're part of it. <laughs> I don't remember signing up for any of this stuff. <laughs> I don't honestly. I could have blacked out somewhere in, in between being one year old and being 28 year old but i don't believe that i i don't remember signing anything to to give my patronage to a collective yeah dave i i, I hear you using the word force a lot and i'm very uncomfortable with that <laughs> that's, well, that, that's the response that i get when, a I, when I talk to people behind you that. i've deemed that a safe space <laughs> you can go in there there's 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 videos of puppies jumping around and and, and bozo the clown and you'll have a lot of fun in there Oh my god! It's it's really funny when uh, when people they don't want to confront the reality of like you know like Ayn Rand right you can ignore reality but you can't ignore the consequences of ignoring reality right so when when you know volunteerists and anarchists try to point out the violence inherent in in the state 
people get very uncomfortable, right? I guess that's the cognitive dissonance. You know, you, you know, you're always taught to revere, to revere the government, bow to the politicians. You know, consider them it's, like it's Uncle like Sam. Talking, it's, it's my family. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like ta- it's, it's like telling a, a a a Mexican that Catholicism is evil. All right, <laughs> and, and them going, no, it's not. You, no, it's not. No, no, no. You need to think back. They, the, the Spanish raped and murdered your ancestors and forced this religion upon you. That is the only reason why you believe in Christianity. And any other, any other reason you have is null and void because it's a lie. Mm-hmm. There's now, for the most part, I'm talking not in every case. Yeah. So you sit here and say. The same thing to someone who believes in government and told government is necessary and legitimate their whole life. Say government forces evil. And their, their mind thinks just like me talking to the Mexican, telling him that Catholicism is evil. Or to be honest with you, outside of where Christianity start started, if you are a Christian, that idea was imposed upon your ancestors. So British people, Irish people, Scott, French Italian, all, all of that forced upon you. So you didn't come to those beliefs by chance or by ration or logic. You came to those beliefs through indoctrination and tradition and culture. And to think out of those bo- out of that box, to go back to what I was saying earlier, to think out of that box is frightful for some people. That's why I say there's certain people that that just can't think outside of their box. It's a, it's too, they would rather die than admit that because let's say you're 50 years old and you've been a a priest or a pastor or a a politician for your whole life. You're not, you're going to, you're going to sit here and tell me that you're going to easily lay down your, your gun and say, yeah, I've been doing evil my whole life. That's a, that's a huge step. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's nice to see that, and that's why it's so nice to see when um, we see people who are, you know, ex-police or ex-military come out and, uh, you know, realize the uh, inherent violence in what they were advocating and uh, make the complete 180, like, uh, you know, the guy Rayford Davis we interviewed. Um, it's, it's, it's wonderful to see that, so... Yeah, it's it's just, uh, you know, we got we to gotta continue talking about this because it's it's so important to have people realize what they're actually doing and you know it's it's not just about like um you know getting rid of drugs or educating kids right it's really about violating people's individual rights human rights right and and it's about indoctrinating children against their will (laughs) you know because for some people i guess they believe that if it's written down by some politician then somehow it's not um you know i guess somehow it's consensual (laughs) because they represent us so whatever they do everybody else must want right or they're not (laughs) because they're our representatives (laughs) or they're not morally responsible for their actions like like somehow when you put on a badge or you put on your your flag lapel and you get up there and you tell soldiers to go kill people you're somehow absolved from all that because you were just acting on part of government that Mm. to me makes no sense uh when you really think about it and when people aren't afraid to challenge their biases and as you can see through all the shit that's going on in American universities and God knows other universities in the in the in the world, uh, they, they're they're taking away this individualism and saying, "No, you've been repressed. You've been doing this. This has all been thrust upon you. You need to violently overthrow that." And what what good has violence done anybody in this entire planet? It may give you short term gains, but the peaceful way is always preferred. Always. You know, everyone wants to go and talk about how nice of a person someone is, but if you support the state, you're not a very nice person, in my book. Unwillingly or idiotically, maybe, uh, you don't know these things, but when it comes down to the root, if you think that forcing ideas upon other people is a coherent and logical thing to do, you're, I, I don't want you in my life. I don't want to be around you. I don't want to talk to you. Yeah, that reminds me of a, of a quote by, I think it's um, Thomas Sowell. He says, it's easy to be conspicuously compassionate when, when you don't have to uh, deal with the consequences of what you're doing. And that basically describes every politician, right? Like, yeah, you know, why it's is it? It's for the poor, it's for the children, right? It's for the elderly. 
I mean, there's so much shit going on. There's so much background noise. Uh, it just it, it. No one likes to sit down and really question their beliefs. They all like to just play along with the madness, in my opinion. And we sound like crazies when we step out of their paradigm. And that's because paradigms are for the people that need everything in the box. They don't want to think outside of the box. They want to think, this is how this is. There's nothing I can do to change it. Let me try to work in within the system and be as happy as possible. And hopefully, I don't. the boot doesn't come down on me. Mm-hmm. And I don't think humanity is going to change until people get past that and are willing to question their beliefs. Critical thinking and rational thought should be taught in schools at age – if you're putting your kid into a school and they're not teaching that – in early development, then you're sending your kid to a school for them to turn out to be a zombie. Well, it's, uh, I mean, it wouldn't make sense if they taught critical thinking. <laughs> because no, none because of them would end up in school. <laughs> it's a, think, a thinking man can't be a slave. Yeah. That's why, Danilo. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and that is, that is a Frederick Douglass quote right there for you. A thinking man cannot be a slave. Right. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it was, I think it was like critical thinking makes a man unfit to be a slave, right? I made I made a, a an uh, I made a we were discussing the other day in the group or on on the group Skype chat um, if people at the very top of like are the Rothschilds the most anarchist people in the world because what's more freeing than be, controlling all the banks in the world and basically controlling every politician as a puppet mm-hmm. what what's more free, who is more free than a Rothschild. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. All right. So you, you sit here and you say, uh, it, it, you know, government is bad and all that. And all I'm saying is, is I don't think government's bad. I just want 7 billion governments out there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I want each person to be their own government. I, I don't know why that's so hard for people to understand. Just Start breaking it down from top to bottom. Everyone has their own country. Should be simple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, you wouldn't have, uh, you know, uh, mercenaries to carry out your will because you would have to be, uh, you're bound, you know, morally bound to whatever action you take, right? So you can't, what? you no, can't no, no, pass no, no, the no. buck off on, on anyone else, right? <laughs> what what soldier is going to take fake phony money? Exactly. I mean, unless your <laughs> is ri- unless your plans are to build an army. Pay them in gold or Bitcoin or whatever because they're going to want money. People don't shoot and kill people for free usually. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you're going to build an army and then start taking other people's resources. They're going to violently resist you. So I, 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 cooperation is the uh, the key. You, you see, even when you cut away the, the, the corporatist stuff, most businesses do act uh, in an altruistic or, or egalitarian manner. You know, like, I don't, I don't think if the state went away, Walmart would buy an army and start forcing people to use Walmart and become a, a pseudo state. I, I just don't think that would happen. I don't mm. I don't think that. Uh, now, the question of Lockheed Martin or Boeing or, or, or one of the other fascist military industrial complex companies, that, that'll be scary when all that goes down, when mm. a collapse happens. Those people are going to. Uh, they'll be the biggest proponents for in instituting another state. Right. Yeah, yeah, definitely. There's uh, there's quite a few companies that um, can exist, I think, on the free market. And, um, you know, because they, they do depend on, um, you know, peace and prosperity to thrive. And like, like you said, military contractors, what, you know, I guess uh, in some way they would have to align themselves with defense companies <laughs> or insurance agencies. But... Uh, but yeah, for the most part, they um, you know they achieve their their wealth and power through uh, you know government contracts and and subsidies and things like that. So you know, th- and those are the, those are the companies that thrive in war, right? In, in perpetual think, warfare. Think about right? how much think about how much the welfare system is saving Walmart from paying its employees. That, I mean, it really is propping up Walmart. Mm-hmm. If Walmart, I mean, because all right, let's think about this, okay? If there was no minimum wage and then there was no um, welfare, all right? And Walmart came out and said, hey, we're going to pay people $4 an hour. No one's going to take that job unless they're really up against the wall. 
Mm-hmm. But even if they do take that job, they're going to get in. They're going to try to grow. They're going to try to go to the top because they have to. All right, they have to because the survival depends upon it. Mm-hmm. And, and when you take that incentive away, you get all these mindless drones that work the counter and cabinets and all that at, at, uh, at Walmart, and they know they can't go any more higher because that would cost Walmart more money, and they're already only making money because of heavy subsidization and, and welfare. <laughs> it's it's really the whole the whole deck of cards is stacked. Uh, where if you 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 mess up mess up one little card, everything kind kind of comes collapsing down. If you get my drift on this, and you know, I don't I don't think a huge multinational corporation like Walmart can exist uh, without a government. And you know, and then you have people like the largest employer in the world is the DHS in Britain, the Department of Health Services. What's going to happen when the DHS goes bust? Britain's going to go bust, mm-hmm. just like the U.S., just like every nation. What's going to happen to all those people that have, you know, I'm a bureaucrat for the uh, Department of Health Services. What's going to happen? You're, you're, okay, well, th- this hospital started up. We only need doctors and nurses, and we need somebody to run the show. But you're a bureaucrat. We have no government that we need to deal with here, so you can go kick rocks. <laughs> right. Yeah, and it's all about, uh, you know, it's all about the belief in authority, right? Because the people... The um, the host, right? The industry is always outnumber the parasites, right? So, so and and they only get their power through the belief that they have the power, right? That's the only the only way. And, and it kind of reminds me of um, this uh, this scene from the Game of Thrones when um, you know the, this guy asked um, the, you know the the short guy, the midget, I forget his name, <laughs> Tyrion uh, Lannister. Right, right, Tyrion. You know, he asked him, you know, um, who has you know, if three people are in a room, right? You have a king. You have a rich man and you have a, 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 a guy with a sword, right? Who's, and, you, and you tell each of them to kill the other, who lives and who dies, right? And so Tyrion says, well, the guy with the sword, he's got more power. And he's like, so if that's true, then, then people with swords are, what, what, are kings? No, people with, you know, the, the, the strongest people are kings. No, no, power lies with those that believe they have power, right? So the king is not the strongest guy, he's just believed <laughs> to, to be like, maybe the rightful ruler, right? If that can ever be such a thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like right? uh, that 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 was one of the most anarchist things I've ever heard on on a show ever. Right. <laughs> it, it, all, all, people only believe they have power. Uh, someone has power when they when they believe it. You're 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 absolutely right. You know, you look at someone like um, Bill Gates. He's the richest, one of the richest men in the world. What does he have in his bank? Is it, is it Federal Reserve note? Is it fiat money? If it is, then he's just as screwed as anybody else after a dollar collapse. <laughs> he, he's worth just as much as everyone else. So, and and the reason the fiat money has value to people is because they believe it. <laughs> just like gold, just like anything, really. Mm-hmm. But m- fiat money is even worse when it comes to that because it, it's printed out of nowhere. There's nothing back in it. It's paper, and you know your old story of adding another zero to make a hundred dollar bill. How does a little bit of ink increase the value of a piece of paper? <laughs> you know, right. less Pablo Picasso painted on that piece of paper. <laughs> but, uh, right, right. You know, um, I, you know, I just, uh, I think people should read economics at least once in their life. And I think that they should, uh, always question every, every one of their beliefs. Every every one of your beliefs always question them. When you say, when you say, when you're in your head, I've got this figured out. It's scary for me to question this. I don't want to question this. I want to push this away from me, and I want to sit in my confirmation bias. I think that that kills you as a human. That that you're you're it's self induced mental slavery, for a lack of better words. Mm-hmm. And and I really, I I think the key for Freedom is getting people to question their beliefs, question everything they've been told to, especially anything that says you can't question this. And I, I you know, I, I never bought into anything that anyone ever told me, hey, don't question this. I'm just right. Trust me. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's that's always a precursor for someone about to get fleeced. <laughs> Trust me. Or, or uh, don't worry, I'm from the government. I'm here to help. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> yeah, one one reason why I love altruism is, to me, it's a uh, 
it's a philosophy of extreme humility. Um, you know, it's an admission that I don't know how to ru- how my neighbor should run his life, right? And it's immoral for me to impose my will on him, right? And most people don't even know how to run their own lives, <laughs> let alone other people. And it's, no, and, they don't. You know, <laughs> and it's really amazing that people, you know, barely get by themselves and yet they feel competent enough to vote for a politician because they Mo- they believe this healthcare policy is good, that monetary yeah. policy is good. It's like, run most your own people, life. <laughs> most people can't even tell you their favorite movie, but they can tell you exactly how much the top 1% should be taxed. Right. <laughs> so it's like it's just a, it's a joke the whole thing you know when someone like no one comes to what the tax rate should be on a top one percent like that no one comes to that without some kind of propaganda like no one goes what should the richest people be taxed at should they be taxed at the same rate as i am or should they be taxed more or less <laughs> i don't know no one no one just ponders that out of nowhere plus that's like a third or fourth order effect the one percent wouldn't exist without government Taxes wouldn't exist without government, and your argument about who should be taxed more wouldn't exist without the government. Mm-hmm. So all of that is pointless to talk about. Mm-hmm. Should government exist is the first question. <laughs> always get always get down to the first question on people. Don't 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 sit there and swat at the flies. Find the nest and kill the nest. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. It's uh, you know when they ask those questions, they're they're still operating in the status paradigm, right? You know what what healthcare policy should we have? What what tax reform should we enact? What what uh, educational reform should we, should we enact? You know, whereas it you know it's more like it's more like well, it, it, translation to all that, where should we use the stolen funds? Should we use the stolen funds here, or should we use the stolen funds here? So this crony or this crony? <laughs> right. I don't I don't know. Should it should it go to the environmental lobby? Should it go to the coal <laughs> lobby? Should it go to the where, what do we, where do we give all this freedom to? Do we give this freedom to this group of because <laughs> you know in the statist. Uh, paradigm freedom equals lack of risk like I was saying earlier yeah <laughs> oh I want the government to build a wall to protect my tradition and culture your tradition and culture means shit they really do <laughs> they don't mean anything uh, at all and trying to protect them is where evil breeds <laughs> you know in my opinion I saw a good uh, Jeremy uh, Jeffrey Jeffrey Tucker quote about about the you know the wall that, that uh, Trump was saying. You know, he's saying the uh, Trump is saying build this huge wall right to uh, to keep out the Mexicans. He's like, well, if that's if that's true, then maybe we should build walls between each states, each of the states. And if that's true, maybe we should build walls between each of the cities. And if that's true, we should build walls between each of the towns. <laughs> and you know the reason why we don't have walls between states because they don't work. Freedom works. No, 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 Trump. No, 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 no. You're not thinking about this correctly, Danilo. (laughs) Trump wants to build a wall, name it Trump Wall, and then before he gets out of his presidency, he wants to say, "Ah, we're gonna we're gonna sell off the wall to Trump Industries," and then that'll be his biggest casino ever. Right. It'll be like it'll be like a tourist attraction, the Great Wall of Trump. (laughs) You're not thinking correctly here, Danilo. You gotta you gotta think like a fascist. All right. I think he's trying to compete with China. He's like, we have to make it visible from space. All right, <laughs> we have to. We if we're gonna do this, we got to do it right. <laughs> oh, let's see here. America can't even pay their fucking employees right now. They're having to print money for that. But let's spend a gigantic amount of money on protecting a border that should be open. All right. All right? I mean, here's what's funny: is every conservative in the world will tell you we need to end immigration. Uh, you know, blah, 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 blah. And you ask any conservative who their favorite president is, and they'll all say Reagan. And Reagan was a staunch advocate for open borders. So <laughs> it's it's like they don't even know what's going on inside their head. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Statists are so confused about everything and er- how everything works. They want to say stuff and then bury their head in the sand because you can't question what I just said. And it's like I'm not a- – I'm not – I'm asking you to explain yourself, right? Yeah. I need more clarity to make sure that you're saying something that's worth me understanding. And a lot of people, don't, they, they get so defi- – you can see it in their, their head. You can tell someone's indoctrinated when you ask a simple question and they respond with hate right. or sophistry or anger. Mm-hmm. They, it's not rational. <laughs> the belief – if something is – that you believe in in your life, and I'm talking to anybody, even anarchists. If there's something in your life and you believe and you're not willing to question it, 
you're a dunce. You should be in the corner wearing a dunce cap and everyone should laugh at you. <laughs> All right? That's someone who isn't thinking for themselves. And I, I, those are dangerous and scary people. Yeah, the um, yeah the the immigration thing. I kind of laugh when people t- talk to me about that because I'm like, all right, so your car is made in Japan, your clothes are made in Malaysia, your <laughs> your socks are made in Indonesia, your boxes, <laughs> your food comes from France. You, <laughs> you know, it's like where did where did, where did your uh, soul patch uh, gel come from? Oh, this is homegrown. All this. <laughs> oh, okay. You don't you don't gel it up with some hair gel? Nah, this is all all local, oh. locally grown and sourced. So, <laughs> but uh, a little, little bit of spit down there, huh? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I mean, I mean, you, you go far enough back, and you know, we're all immigrants, right? You know, we all came from a different land. You know, like, if you're not a you know Native American heritage, um, so the whole you know immigrant argument is completely bunk. You know, completely. Oh yeah, fallacious. I had a communist ask me the other day. You know, who owned the land that you live on now? I said, I don't know. I don't know. He said, you think it was the Indians? I was like, I don't know. I'm like 3% uh, Creek Indian. So I guess maybe one of my ancestors owned it or uh-huh. used it. I, I don't know. Yeah. So, yeah, like, I don't I don't know. I don't have a running uh, ledger for all this stuff. Like, you're asking pedantic questions that can't be answered. Right. They're like gotchas. I don't like gotchas. I like questions that can be answered concisely and, and, and logically. Yeah, I got a, a question by a guy because I posted um, on Twitter recently um, talking about private property and, and public property. You know, pu- private property is redundancy and public property is uh, an oxymoron. And, uh, you know, if, you, if your ideas require force, then your ideas are worthless. And, and so his question was, well, how can you, um, you know, so all... F- all force is evil like uh, like so how can you say like force is evil if if you know you're talking about private you know and i talked about individual rights and you know positive rights and negative rights he's like but if rights don't exist how can rights be moral or immoral <laughs> so well, uh, right rights are legal fiction but when we say individual rights they're, they're based in natural law right right and, and a lot of people don't understand it like it's 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 like we're speaking a different language, and it is because we are. We're using different definitions for things. Mm-hmm. So it's very hard to speak with a statist until you get them to define things. Because you, you, you even ask two ANCAPs to define something, and they'll give you two different answers. So <laughs> it's, uh, you know, uh, but uh, to what you were saying is, is uh, what he was asking is, is th- there aren't, they're not questions for him to want a more understanding of the situation. They're, they're only questions to prove that you're, uh, to him that you're wrong. Mm -hmm. And I I don't think that, I think everyone's got these shields up around their ideologies and stuff and they're, they refuse to question them. You know, like, like I I said somebody to on the podcast the other day when we had Jerry one on there, I, I, I honestly hold no beliefs that I'm not willing to question. Even voluntarism, even abolitionist, e- even anything like that, even anarchy, I, I'll question any of those. If something more rational comes along that makes more logical sense and is morally sound, yeah, sure, I'm going to that. But I, I don't see how that could happen. That's why the uh, that's what drew me into the allure of voluntarism is because it was so logically consistent and it was tough to accept. Mm. Yeah, and, right. and people, like I said earlier, they want to bury their head in the sand and live in their confirmation bias. <laughs> they don't want to question things. It's uncomfortable. And you, you see these kids now, they're, they're, tearing, they're protesting and tearing down colleges because someone says, I don't agree with what you just said. That, that's all they said. I, they gave no juxtaposition. They, nothing else. They just said, I don't agree completely with what you said. Oh, you're an evil person. You're ruining my safe space. You need to get out of here. You know? No, those people are mentally, they're mentally enslaved. And I, 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 for the life of me, that's what I fight all day long is mental enslavement. People refusing to accept that they own themselves. Mm. That is it. No idea owns you, no government owns you, no authority figure owns you, your parents don't own you, the college professor doesn't own you, the pastor doesn't own you. No one owns you but you unless you give yourself up. All right. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, you, you know, self-ownership is such a basic idea and, and then, um, you know, and then you know, you go from there to your labor 
and the things that you produce with your labor is your property, right? Your justly acquired property. If you if you produce it or you buy it um, or you trade them, you know, and and that's all that I when I tell people about force, right? You you know what's moral is to defend those things that or justly acquired, right? The, your property well, or you, your body, which is an extension of your or your property is an extension of your body. You you have to you have to look up the definition to, of force, and you know I'll do it real quick just so I don't sound like an idiot and say something wrong. Define force. All right. The definition of force is the use of physical power or violence to compel or restrain. Um, or it's the capacity to do work or cause physical change. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, there's, there's those two. And when we say force, we're never really talking about defensive violence or defensive force. We're always talking about the initiation of force. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, like, like, like I was saying earlier with the, the me selling you bread, if I walked up to you and put a gun in your face and said, you're buying my bread today, Danilo, would anyone consider that a moral action? Would anyone, even a sociopath or a psychopath, would, would they say that was a moral action? <laughs> no. Why? Because it's an infringement upon self-ownership. Mm -hmm. You're stealing something from them. Right. doesn't matter if they're getting something in return. You're right. stealing from them. So when we say force, a lot of people get confused and think that, well, we're all just pacifists. If someone's stealing from us, we're, since we're against force, then no, 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 we're not against. We're, we're like a scorpion or a porcupine, all right? I mean, uh, maybe a scorpion's a bad idea, but a porcupine. Yeah, more like, most more time like a porcupine, yeah. <laughs> more like a, yeah, think of libertarians or, or, or abolitionists or whatever you want to call us as a porcupine. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know? When, when's the last time a porcupine ran up and started st throwing barbs at someone? No, it's always when someone tried to fuck with them. <laughs> right. And when you, once you realize that everyone's a porcupine, things make a lot more sense. And that's why communism can't work. That's why any other form of collectivism can't work for a majority of people. There are some people out there that will give their life to a commune or whatnot or don a, don a soldier's uniform and go die for their country. But that's not for everybody. And to force another person into that is evil. Yeah, yeah. I, um, a while ago, I did a, a post on uh, anarcho-communism, and uh, <laughs> I was uh, put in my place, but a lot of the anarcho-communists, and I think rightfully so, though, because, you know, like, like you said, you know, some people may choose to live in a commune. You know, let's, you know, they could be anarchists, but they choose to live in a commune. And as long as they don't try to force their ideology onto other people, I'm fine with that. You know, that's just the way different people choose to live, which is fine with me. And it, and it's completely consistent with, uh, you know, with anarcho capitalism, you know, so <clears throat> that, you know, so basically to me, you know, it's more like um, panarchy or anar just, you know, anarchism without hyphens, basically, you know, it's like whatever, whatever way you choose to live or whatever happens after that's people, uh, you know, uh, get rid of the uh, belief in authority, then I'm fine with that. <laughs> That's that's why I majoritably say I am a voluntarist yeah. or an abolitionist. I'm against slavery. If you're for slavery, I don't want to be around you. Mm -hmm. Now, the fact is that most people don't see statism as slavery is a different issue. Yeah. But I don't care what system you want to live into. Just don't force me to involve myself with that. That's that's the that's the core argument in voluntarism. I don't care what you do. Just do not use force against me. Mm -hmm. I don't care. I don't care. You wanna, you wanna go have, uh, you wanna go be gay and adopt a bunch of babies and teach them uh, how to break down AR-15s and clean them and, and and operate drones and stuff. I I don't I don't care as long as it doesn't bother me. <laughs> doesn't as long as it doesn't force me to do anything. Right. I I don't care and, and that's you know so. And comms, I, I at a certain point, I just say I don't care. Or I'll ask them, "Are you willing to force your ideas upon me? If not, then I don't care. I, I don't care to. what you, I yeah. don't care what you believe. <laughs> <laughs> you could believe in Zenu and all the other bullshit. I don't care. <laughs> and, and and I think that you have these ancoms. They do care what other people think. They all want you to be communist. Mm. Whereas an ancap or a voluntarist, they say I don't care what you are. Just I just leave me out of it. It's that simple. Yeah. 
Yep, yep. It's just it's just about um, you know leaving people in peace, and uh, it's, it's like. Um, I think uh, it was Chris Dwayne from The Truth Never Told. One of his, uh, <laughs> maybe somebody else said this, but I heard him say it. Uh, there's two people, two types of people in the world: those uh, that uh, want to be left alone, and those who won't keep you, who won't leave you alone, right? <laughs> and like you said, you know, most most anarchists, most volunteers are like porcupines, right? They just want to be left alone, and they will not attack. Uh, you know. They will not be um, <clears throat> violent, I guess, unprovoked, right? You know, you can you can provoke people only so much until they react, right? So, so that's um, <clears throat> that's that's just you know <laughs> that's what we try to that's what we try to do when we spread ideas and talk about volunteerism and anarchy and uh, Austrian economics is to help people understand you know human action and incentives and why why you know people act in a certain way you know it's it's not because of sexism racism feminism it's not because of uh you know the the white man hates the black man (laughs) you know people act um like like as we were saying before in a self-interested way right um you know most people just want to get by want to make enough money to feed their family raise their kids right have to raise you know moral compassion empathetic kids right um and uh and I think that's what drives most of humanity to do what they do. You know, it's it's not some sinister underlying reason. You know, that's <laughs> that's more like the politicians. <laughs> yeah, I, I think the a lar- the the biggest challenge that that is part of being a voluntarist when speaking to statist is say you know getting them to see the gun in the room. I think that's the the hardest thing for them to see is is that their actions have consequences and that voting, that paying your taxes and all these not only hurts themselves, but it hurts other people and it's pure evil. And I, I, and I don't think that they realize that that's what they do. They, I think they, pra- they look at it in a pragmatic sense that, oh, it, if, I don't, if I don't participate, then I'll get screwed anyways. Mm. And it's like, well, then it's never going to end. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, two-thirds of the people in the country didn't vote for the president last, last election. Two-thirds. Hmm. So what, what, why, why do we have a president? <laughs> why? <laughs> why? 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 <clears throat> and I say we loosely. I don't have a president. Right. Right. There's people that have the power to claim to be president towards me, but I don't have a president. I don't have a congressman. I don't have anybody like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right right exactly so well uh dave uh, if uh, thanks a lot for coming on the show if there's any last words you want to give to the listeners um you know uh, where they can find you where they can follow you if they want to follow more of your work i right now i have my account on private on facebook for a myriad of reasons um so you can't really follow me there on my personal page but you can follow everything uh I, I say and I'm about uh, by searching on the uh, the uh, Facebook there. Uh, search uh, for the group uh, the Seeds of Liberty or Se- no, it's just Seeds of Liberty. Ask to join, you'll automatically get invited by one of our guys, and just participate. Ask me a question. I, I will have a Skype debate with anybody that watches this uh, this um, this show right here. If you want to talk. Um, also, I uh, have a page on Facebook as well called the Seeds of Liberty Podcast. Um, really ch- hope you check that out. Uh, it's a uh, more soft approach towards spreading uh, voluntarism and, and freedom than, than you know, a lot of the shows out there that just beat you over the head with stuff. Um, and I, I don't really have much else other than that. I mean, you can follow me on Twitter at Dave the Hill. I prob- probably won't follow you back, but... You can follow me there. <laughs> I tweet sometimes. I haven't been as active since I started the Seeds of Liberty stuff because, you know, I'm on social media like eight hours a day on and off. And I've got, you know, so much management to do with the Seeds of Liberty Twitter and Facebook page and keeping that active and, and interacting with, with uh, viewers and, and fans and stuff like that. But, you know, uh, if I could leave with one thing, if you've, if you've never – Listen to Danilo's podcast uh, before, or uh, Danilo on our show before. I really appreciate uh, appreciate it if you try that. Uh, check out our show. If you're just a peaceful anarchist, uh, anarchism uh, listener, go check out our Seeds of Liberty uh, show. Uh, Danilo 
uh, and Jeremy and myself, we have a lot of laughs. It's a lot of fun. That's I think ninety percent of the people tell me that the only reason I listen to your show is because of the laughs, <laughs> and, and you know I, I I love that you know because you know you keep them laughing or they'll kill you. <laughs> so, right, exactly. Uh, but I really appreciate you having me on, man. I I I was getting a little I was getting a little conscious about it, <laughs> and uh, maybe I did did say hey you should have me on, but it, it was fun. <laughs> I, I enjoy talking to you, Danilo. You're a great guy, and uh, and all of your fans that uh, are, are are very passionate about your show, they're probably great people as well, because um, I think you draw people like that to you. Thank you, thank you very much. That's uh, yeah, I, I love being on the show. Thank you know, I really appreciate you inviting me on the show or inviting me to be a part of the show. It's really awesome. Uh, well, the way I know. did it is is we were in that group. Um, New Gateway. Right, right. And I found the two most logically consistent and level headed and cool headed people. And it just happened to be you and Jeremy. And then we just kind of remember we tossed around the idea we should do a podcast, we should do a podcast. And then finally I just said, We're doing a podcast. <laughs> yeah. And uh it was rough there for the first four or five episodes, but now it's 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 smooth sailings and and I just talked to um somebody about starting a, a one man show. Uh That'll be pop dropping every Friday. Uh, I think you can expect that in December, maybe late November. Awesome. Uh, we're trying to kick back up our Force to Freedom show, and and of course we we share your show every Tuesday on on our our, our show, or on our page and everything. And you know, I love your show. I listen to almost every one of them. When it comes to like homeschooling and stuff, I really don't listen to them because I don't have any kids and I don't really. <laughs> uh, I hate state schools, but. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I, I really don't get into the old homeschooling stuff or unschooling stuff, but I do think that is paramount uh, for people to start doing is robbing the state of their child's mind. And uh, yeah, man, I really appreciate having me on. <clears throat> I hope I wasn't too long winded. No, no, no. Great. It was a great conversation. Thanks a lot for coming on the show. Um, so if you want to donate to um, the Seeds of Liberty, you can go. There's um, uh, through through Bitcoin or Patreon, uh, they, they accept donations over there. We accept donations as well as the peaceful anarchism. I also have my own <laughs> uh, PayPal, Bitcoin, and uh, Patreon. You can donate, help us out, or you can just like, comment, share, subscribe to the show to help us spread the message of freedom, economics, and volunteerism. Right? In yep. <laughs> increasing increasing consensual associations uh of all people around the world right <clears throat> that's the way to bring freedom in my in my opinion so awesome conversation dave thanks a lot for coming to the show really appreciate it uh so this is peaceful anarchism on the voluntary virtues network and the seeds of liberty.com and the conscious resistance.com wishing everyone have a wonderful day take care bye bye <laughs>